So welcome to a walkthrough video uh, for the first day of the Vanier 90 tutorials. Um, in this part, I'm going to look at uh, example one, which is silicon valence bands. Um, I'm going to split this into two parts. So the first part, I'm going to run the self-consistent calculation and obtain the band structure with Quantum Expresso. And then in a second part, I will look at obtaining the Vanier functions. OK, so I'm going to do this by connecting to the remote server by SSH, but you may well be doing uh, it within the web interface. That might be easier for some of the graphical aspects. OK, so I connect into the server. There I am. Um, I'm going to go into example one. Hopefully you've been told uh, how and where to download the examples from. And I've got a number of different files. So the first thing I need to do for any calculation is to run a self-consistent field, SCF calculation, to get the ground state charge density. So if I just have a quick look at O1SCF.in, that's what I'm telling Quantum Expresso to do. So I've specified the, the lattice of silicon um, to atoms in the unit cell. I've told it which pseudopotential to use and various other things. OK, we'll go into that in any great detail. Um, so to run Quantum Expresso, I run PW x I'll pipe in 01.scf and here we go uh, I'll put the output into scf.out okay you can ignore that that uh, that warning message um, so I'm following quite carefully the um, the PDF that you have available okay not necessarily going through every step but just getting a quick sense. So calculations ran. I will do a quick ls minus lt uh, that orders the file in date order just to make sure there's no file there called error or crash or something like that. So, okay, we've written data in a directory called out and we've written all our output into scf.out. So let's have a quick look at scf.out. Okay, so worth having a skim through this. if. Uh, tells us how many things like how many atoms, how many electrons, what the unit cell is, just a sort of good check on things. Here's the number of K points we've used. And eventually we get to the point where it says, says self-consistent calculation. So this point here, and then we actually start doing some work. And now we're minimizing the total energy. And you can see the, the uh, total energy is going down. The accuracy is getting uh, tighter and tighter. And at this point here, then after five seconds, we say we are done. And um, it's just going to print out the eigenvalues at the different K points. Um, so this is the gamma point. And just to note, there are four occupied states. We're treating this as an insulator. And the highest state there is threefold degenerate, as you might expect in silicon, 3.6865. OK, load of eigenvalues. That's really interesting. Um, and interestingly, though, here it does say the highest occupied level is uh, 6.365 EV. Now, that will turn out to be useful later. If you like that, you could, in an insulator, you could treat that as the Fermi energy, potentially, the, to the top of the valence band. Okay. So that calculation, and we get some timing information, and it says job done at the end. So this means everything worked well. That is all good. So... What does the exercise tell us to do next? So what we'd like to do is compute a band structure. OK. So in order to do a band structure, we've now got the Hamiltonian, the charge density that defines the Hamiltonian. We'd like to diagonalize it at uh, the K points along the band structure that we want. So we're not going to change the Hamiltonian, the charge density. We're going to keep that fixed. We're just going to solve it for an arbitrary set of K points in order to get our eigenvalues and hence plot our band structure. So if I copy the scf.in to o2, um, uh, my calling this bands.in. And my I like to use vi, but if you can use any editor that you so wish. OK, so what does it say in the, it says to change this to bands. So we're doing a fixed calculation. It tells us to tell it how many bands to actually compute. OK, so we set in the system part, we will set this. And it also suggests that we um, set this parameter to be true. Um, you can go and look up what that means. But it means, well, we're, we're interested in the accuracy of all the states, not just the occupied states. OK, uh, now, so 
for the SCF calculation, we used a regular grid of K points, 10 by 10 by 10. Um, but for the path, uh, the band structure, we're going to need to path. So I'll get rid of those two lines and take what it suggests. So I'll just tidy, tidy that up a bit because it makes no difference, but somehow that feels a bit more aesthetic. Okay, so this is going to be, um, I'm going to be computing Uh, the band structure from L to gamma and then gamma onto X. Okay. Right, I think that's all the things that I need to do. So I'll save that and I'll run PW again, reading in from O2 into, I'll call it bands.out. Okay, took a little bit longer to do that than the SCF calculation because there were quite a few K points. Um, and hopefully now we see there are no error messages and we can look at bands.out and that's signal. Yep. Um, yeah, it didn't give us all the K points. There were so many K points, it decided not to, to write them all out for us, but we could have changed the verbosity in the input and then it would have put them all out. So, but uh, job done, so that's fine. Okay, now as we're gonna do a band structure, we're going to run the bands command. Okay, I'll leave you to look at the quantum expression documentation on more of what bands.x is actually doing. Okay, that having finished, that's normally quite quick. We are going to call the plot bands command. So plot band.x, okay, the input file bands dot out no bands dot out bands dot that sorry which was written in the previous step okay it's looked at that and we need to give it the for the plot we need to give it the range so um, the lowest band the bottom of the band structure is about minus 5.7 and the top of the band structure is about 20 and a half so let's say if we go from minus 7 to 22 okay this is all very quick so you could just repeat this step if the graph didn't look how you wanted it okay that's fine uh we need to give it an output file so let's call it uh, qe bands.agr and QE bands dot PS. Now, let's take the Fermi energy to be that highest occupied level that we found it before. So I made a note of that. So in my case, it is this. Okay. Um, so these are set in uh, the the delta e is the sort of spacing on the energy scale maybe that's two and um, a reference energy so we can set that to be the fermi energy so what that will do is it will make the fermi energy zero okay so let's put that in and there we go okay so you can have a look at qebands.ps okay so what I actually did there is I copied that back to my home machine and opened it uh, as a postscript file. And here is the band structure that we got. So we asked for 13 bands. Um, the dotted line there, zero, is set to the uh, the top of the, of the valence band that we, we calculated. Okay, we can see this is silicon. It's an indirect gap. The, the bottom of the conduction band is approximately somewhere about here. But that's our band structure with QE. And that's just a good first step. It gives us an indication of what to think about in terms of constructing the Vanier functions. Um, and also gives us a way of comparing the Vanier band structure with the, the full calculation. So we'll do that a little bit later. But what we're going to focus on in the next tutorial is making Vanier functions that describe the valence bands. Okay, so this that's these four lowest bands.